Hey, what's going on guys? I am Folygon, and in this video I am showing you my entire character creation process from start to finish. We're going from a 2D concept from Luigi Lucarelli. Uh, I'm a huge fan of his, definitely check out his work, to 3D. So I'm going to be digitally sculpting here in ZBrush, showing you all my tips and tricks along the way that I can. And um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I've done some of Luigi's sketches before, just some quick stuff but I've never really done a full character of his. So I'm excited to do this. Also, if you haven't seen yet, I recently got a 3D printer, which I am super pumped about if you can't tell. I'm gonna have a lot of cool 3D prints coming here soon and I'll have a note on that at the end of this video. Now, normally when I sculpt a character, you will pretty much always see me start from a sphere, but I thought it would be fun to switch things up this time around by starting with a Z-sphere. Crazy, I know. Also, what the hell is a Z-sphere? Uh, well, it's a little tough to explain. Probably better to just show you. Uh, so I believe these were first added to ZBrush around version 4, which was roughly 10 years ago now. Uh, they're pretty interesting. They allow you to create something akin to armature. So in traditional sculpture, an armature is a framework around which your sculpture is built. And typically it's made from aluminum wire, but you can use a lot of different stuff for it. So it's kind of the same thing here. You create and append new Z-spheres to make an armature of what you are going to sculpt. I think they're pretty cool in theory, but they are very limited in practice, which is why I don't use them in my usual workflow. Because you are using spheres for everything, you're very limited in the shapes that you can create from a sphere on the micro level. So for instance, when creating a character that has a different shape language, you have no way to really make changes to your form to account for that. On the macro level, you're very limited on the form as well. As an example, I would maybe like to make my character's feet flat, or I would like to extend the shape of a face for my character, or even give them ears. Well, Z-spheres don't really like that very much and tend to warp the base of the shape that you are building on top of. So the entire point here is that we take this armature and convert it to geometry after we are done. But it turns out that you can just start with geometry from the very beginning and have complete control over your form on the micro and macro level, as well as have access to every tool and brush available that you can't use with Z-Spheres, unfortunately. This software is made to work with geometry, and I like to use it for what it does best. Adding an in-between step doesn't really save me any time, and it actually limits my ability. But even with all that said, I still use Z-Spheres for this quick basic armature because I thought it would be fun to switch things up and I get a lot of questions about why I don't use these very, very special spheres. So moving on to actually blocking out the character now, uh, this involves me converting the Z-Spheres to geometry and then shaping that into the basic form of my character. Now a lot of work needs to be done at this point to get into the basic shapes, but essentially what I'm doing here is paying attention to silhouettes. I mainly use what is called the move brush at this stage. It does exactly what it sounds like. It moves the geometry. Crazy, I know, but it is the brush that I use uh, more than anything else here. So of course at this stage, there is a lot more going on than just trying to match the silhouette of your concept, right? If we did that, then everything would look super flat from one side, we'd turn around and be like a flat Stanley situation. So there has to be an understanding of how to wrap form as well as a mental library of references and information, uh, whether that be anatomical or otherwise. In short, what I'm talking about is simply experience. After the blockout stage, we enter into the a la carte menu where we can kind of work on, well, whatever we want. So I could spend some time making some shoes, the hat, the clothes. I have to do it all eventually anyway, uh, but typically I like to move on to the face next. The reason I do this is because the face is the focal point of your character, and it helps to bring everything together. Plus, it keeps me personally interested in working on the character more, and in general, I'm going to need to put a large portion of my time into the face. So the earlier I start, the better. I spend some time creating a very basic shape for the head so that I can match the silhouette as best as I can at this time, but this will change a lot more as I move forward and create more parts of the face. Color is also super helpful early on because it helps you see those proportional differences between your sculpt and your reference. I even block out some very simple hair and a hat early on so that I can make sure the size and shape of my head have enough room for all those parts to fit in there. I think it's a good idea while blocking out to create everything you can see at once in a very basic form before moving on to secondary shapes or detailing. As I move on to create different parts of the face like the nose, lips, eyes, etc, 
you'll notice that I make more changes to the surrounding shape of the head as I place those in. This is because much like blocking out your character, when you start to add more parts of the equation in, it's then possible to see where the other shapes need to change as well. And because all of the parts of the face have this flow to them, things are definitely going to change at least a little bit as you continue to add more of those parts in there. A great example of this is when I place in the eyes and start to kind of block out and paint the shape of the pupil. Based on the reference image, there should be a lot more of the pupil and iris visible towards the inside corner than when I started to paint that in. So this tells me that I need to make room for that to be visible. So I adjust the bridge of the nose and push in on that part of the face to make more room. So it's a lot of small changes just like this that slowly add up over time to big changes. After this, it's on to adding in things like eyelids, eyelashes, more paint, and many, many more changes. Uh, talking more about eyes, they can be one of the hardest parts of the face to get right. And when you have eyes this large, they can cause a lot of issues. One of those really frustrating problems is that they are often so large with this style of character that they can meet together in the middle of the face or sometimes even stick out the side of your character's face, which is always very, very strange to see happening. When this happens inside the head, it's not typically a big deal visually, but because it crosses the central axis, it can mess with your symmetry and cause many more problems down the line. If this ever happens to you, I recommend just removing the parts of the eyeball that aren't seen so that you're left with something like a half sphere, which is still plenty of geometry to move the eyes around without showing any of the gaps. From here, I take a break from the head to work on some other stuff. I wanna keep everything at about the same level of completion, not letting any one area become super polished while I let everything else start to look like garbage or continue to look like garbage in my case. I start with a general cleanup, fixing some shapes in the arms and legs, and then it's on to creating the baseball bat. I use a very simple cylinder and then extrude the shapes that I need with the Z modeler brush to create the basic shape of the bat. For those unfamiliar, I highly encourage you to learn the Z modeler brush. It is essentially the uh, polygon modeling tool here in ZBrush and it's very, very powerful. I also grab some additional reference to get the shape of the bat a little bit closer to where I want. It's always great to grab more images. Just make sure that you don't stray too far from your original concept. After the ball and bat, it's on to cleaning up the shapes for the legs and torso. This is me just noticing more things that need to change that either I didn't notice in the reference or I said I would take care of later. And of course, there's still time to make changes later, even on into posing, which is something that I do. I make some very large proportional changes to this character's height and proportions. Once I break symmetry and go into posing, I try to take care of that stuff in the uh, symmetrical pose here because it's a little bit easier to make those changes, but you don't have to get too attached to what you have because you can still always make changes later on. Next, it's time to go down to the shoes to get those to a little more finished level. I'm going to keep them pretty simple, like in the reference, but I at least wanted to create the tongue of the shoe and white sole. I use combinations of Z remesher, masks, and very simple brushes, just like the move brush, to manipulate the shape closer to my reference image. I continue to make changes to the body one small step at a time in an attempt to push my forms even further. This stage of sculpting can be very difficult to notice if you're actually improving your sculpt or if you're simply noodling. Uh, which for those that don't know, that is the act of working on something over and over again without making any real progress. I personally find it helpful to compare an old version of your sculpt to your current to see how your progress is coming along. This also works great for a sanity check, which is always nice, but it's also smart to save your sculpt in versions. That way, if you need to roll back to an older version for any reason, whether that be a corrupted file, a lost file, you know, you name it, you can always do that uh, with just very little effort. All right, well, it's time to go back up to the face because there are even more changes I wanna make up there, quite a few. Uh, but before I work on the actual head, I want to work on the hat and hair a little bit more. I could have the face absolutely perfect right now, <laughs> which it's not. Uh, but even if it was, I might not be able to tell because of the surrounding forms being incorrect and that can kind of throw you off. So let's dive in up there and make some changes. Lots and lots of little tweaks here and there. This is the kind of stuff that I find very boring, but sometimes zen where you can zone out a little and just continue to sculpt for hour upon hour without really kind of noticing the time passing. You get a little bit into a Genova Chen flow there. You have to be careful though that you don't get caught noodling. That can definitely become a problem and then you're just kind of sitting there wasting time. 
At this point, I've added some little extra things like eyelash strands, belt details, and shoelaces. All very simple, but still time consuming. All these extra pieces were mainly made with the Z Modeler brush, so most of it is simple low poly geo, and I'll edit more of that later on once I pose. Here's a great example of what some of that geometry actually looks like. Uh, right now I have what is essentially a smooth modifier on these that makes them look more smooth than they really are. If you're familiar with that in other 3D applications, it's kind of similar here. It's just called something different. It's just called a dynamic subdivision. Uh, I'll add some real subdivisions to these later to make them actually look like what we can see uh, when it is smoothed out so that I can export this and render it in something else. Next is fixing the hands, adding some fingernails. I tried to use VDMs first when I just modeled them. Uh, if you don't know what a VDM is, it stands for Vector Displacement Map, and there are particular VDM brushes that you can create here in ZBrush using those maps. And it works like an alpha map, but it displaces the geometry true to the original form, uh, which is just a fancy way of saying that you can have undercuts, uh, which you couldn't have in a traditional alpha map. An undercut is essentially an area that would have an underhang or maybe the geometry or form would swoop in. Imagine like Pride Rock from The Lion King. That sticking out, that big gap underneath Pride Rock, that is an undercut and that would never be possible to create that with an alpha map. You would need a VDM to create Pride Rock. <laughs> But all of that is to say that I didn't actually use VDMs. I tried and didn't really get the result that I wanted. Uh, but hey, that's 3D modeling for you. So I just modeled them the old fashioned way and cleaned up my hands a little bit more. Then I posed them a little rough here in the beginning to get a first pass. And I actually streamed this part live. If you were around for that, thank you so much for stopping in and saying hello. Streaming is not something I do very often anymore, but I had time one night this past month and jumped on for a couple hours. It was a lot of fun. I don't have any future live streams planned right now in this moment, but if you follow me anywhere on the, the whole ding dang internet, including here, I'll be sure to let you know the next time I go live. All right, it's time for some big changes here next as I go into posing. This is always such a fun part because then we can work on adding folds to the clothing and all the fun asymmetrical stuff that comes with it. And things really start to feel a lot less stiff and unnatural. A character in a T-pose never really looks super great. I've always really enjoyed posing my characters because it's when things start to come alive, but it can, like many things here in 3D, be very time consuming. So while I am doing that and finishing the last bit of polish on this character, I want to talk about Grand Slams. I feel like I've been making a habit of talking about some new idea at the end of each of these videos, and this one is going to be no different. And I especially think it's fitting here with this baseball character. Uh, when you hit a home run in baseball, you knock the ball out of the park, right? You do something amazing. It's an amazing accomplishment that we all recognize, and it's why it has become an idiom for success. You hit a home run at work this week, or you really just knocked that test out of the park. We've all heard these things and experienced these moments. And then there are grand slams, those extremely rare moments where all the groundwork has been laid, you step up to bat, give it your all, and you succeed. These moments are rare in baseball. I think it was like one in 12, not 12,000, 1,200. 12,000 would be absolutely insane. But like one in 1,200 uh, as often as a grand slam happens. One in 1,200 times a person goes up to bat. That's crazy. That's, that's really special and memorable. I have a folder on my computer called Stylized Grand Slams. I don't know if you could tell, but I really enjoy creating stylized characters. So in this folder, it's full of stylized character artwork that essentially just goes above and beyond what others are willing or really even able to do. And it's somewhat of a golden standard that I aim for and want to go beyond with each new artwork that I create. I don't want to make just another sketch or half finished project. I want to make something that inspires, you know, something that will be remembered longer than the four seconds you will spend looking at the final image that I spent over a month most likely creating. I bring this up because I feel like so many people have this mindset when they start out, but lose the magic somewhere along the journey. I'm definitely someone that has fit into that category at points in my career, but the whole point being here that I want you to remember why you set out to learn whatever it is that you're doing so many months or years ago, or <laughs> maybe even yesterday, I don't know. And always try to prepare for and hit those grand slams. So that's what I'm trying to do by having that constant reminder of that folder on my computer, 
So when I'm working on a project, I can always check back to that and kind of realign myself with the direction that I'm trying to head in. And I really think that if we hold on to something like that, then we can definitely accomplish our goals. All right, sap over, big, weird, philosophical something over. Let's move on. If you follow my channel, you know it's been a while since my last video. Part of that is because I've been super busy with work lately. And another part is because I recently got a new 3D printer. I have a ton of experience creating stuff for physical production, uh, mainly toys that at some point need to be uh, rapidly prototyped through 3D printing. I've worked with meter cubed FDM machines, SLA, SLS, you know, just about every acronym you can name, uh, but I've never had my own personal printer. So I thought it was finally time to pull the trigger and get one for myself. I acquired an AnyCubic Photon just this month, and a lot of what I've been doing up to this point is preparation. So this type of printing requires a lot of work, and I've just been trying to get everything set up to a point where I can print out my sculpts for future videos. I really wanted to print this character as part of this video, but at the risk of it taking another month before I uploaded anything, if I'm being honest, it'd probably take another two. So I'm gonna be holding off on this gal and continuing on to some other works. My first print that I'm still working on while creating this video is the dragon that I sculpted during the 2020 ZBrush beta. I'm still trying to work out all the kinks and get a nice workflow down, but hopefully by my next upload, I can have something really cool to print out and show off for you guys. Awesome, well that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to see a little bit of my process on this character. I definitely enjoyed creating her. Huge shout out again to Luigi Lucarelli. If you guys wanna learn more about digital sculpting, check out my Gumroad and some of my courses. The link for that is down in the description, of course. Click that subscribe button if you're new around here. And with that, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video.